And just to prove my point, the ones that actually did sell in this area, those micro units, sold 92% of asking price. In today's video, the average condo prices and all the numbers you should know by specific neighborhood in Midtown Toronto. I'm gonna to break them down, give you some context and analyze the numbers for you. Hello everyone, this is Sam from Sabiru 6 Real Estate and Remax Real Strong Real Tank. As always, you can find my contact information in the description box. Also, feel free to subscribe, comment, and like this video. Your support is much appreciated if you actually enjoy my content. If not, you're not obliged to do so whatsoever. Uh, feel free to unsubscribe, dislike, and do the opposite. Uh, and let's get to the point of today's video, which is condo prices by specific neighborhoods and communities in Midtown Toronto. Now, I made a similar video uh, about downtown Toronto. The feedback was very good. A lot of people watched it and liked it, and uh, I thought, I would do the same for Midtown Toronto. Now, a couple of prefaces here that is important for you to know. First and foremost, we are only looking at listings that have sold. So I'm not accounting for listings that were on the market and got terminated or sold conditionally. Secondly, I'm looking at condominium apartments, not condominium townhomes, only condominium apartments. Thirdly, these numbers are from 1st of January to January 25th. So they're not accounting for the day of recording of this video and when you're probably watching it, which is probably January 27th or 28th. Lastly, I'm only looking at neighborhoods and communities that actually had transactions in terms of sales. Uh, some did not. What I'm describing as Midtown Toronto is basically south of Lawrence until Bloor Street. Anyways, with all that out of the way, let's get started with the list, shall we? First up, the Annex. Based on 18 transactions, the average asking price was $784,000 in the annex. The average sold price was $751,000. Now here we see a gap of $33,000. Uh, and what does that tell us? Well, it tells us that sellers are not well adjusted in this area. And why is that the case? Well, if you remember from the downtown video where I went through the waterfront and other areas, areas where there are a lot of investors, generally speaking, uh, those areas are more well adjusted in terms of price because investors are much more likely to uh, acclimate to the market and lower their expectations or increase their expectations uh, according to the market than end users. And the annex, although it has its investors, has its fair share of end users and more so relative to the number of condos available than most other areas downtown and midtown as well. Next up, Young Eglinton. The average asking price was $657,000, wherein the average selling price was $637,000, so a gap of $20,000, much less than the annex, yet still not a good gap. I mean, obviously, this is not good for sellers. It's great news for its buyers because when we see, according to these numbers, 97% of asking price on average, that shows us that it is still a buyer's market, um, even though prices are slowly, steadily creeping up throughout Toronto condominium market and the GTA condominium market. Nonetheless, gaps such as these shows us that, yes, we still are operating within a buyer's market. And the sellers have not adjusted, at least here and as well in the annex, to the prices. Furthermore, one thing of note about the Young Eglinton area, when I went through the numbers, it's based on a surprisingly low number of transactions. Let's say we look at an area and we see there is only 15 sales that month. How much can we derive from this? Well, we have to see 15 relative to how many possible uh, uh, units of inventory on the market, right? If a market, if a specific neighborhood only has 30 condominium units, 15 sales that month is and more than enough to derive certain conclusions. However, if, the, if a certain neighborhood has 200 to 700 to 1,500 units and there's only 15 sales that month, although this is an unrealistic example, nonetheless, if there's only 15 sales, we cannot derive much. So relative to the number of units available at the Young and Eglinton area, the number of transactions that we're going based upon for these numbers is far too low. Well, primarily, in my opinion, it has to do with the size of the units. If you look at my previous videos where I go based on square footage, which units are selling at what rate, you see that the smallest units, the smaller end of the spectrum, have had the hardest time to sell. The units that have had the least hard time selling, even in a down condo market, are the units in the middle where it's around 600 to 900 square feet. And even on the 
latter ends of the spectrum, the large, large units have also had a hard time to sell. So the sweet spot really is anywhere from 700 to 1,000 square feet. Uh, however, the lower end of the spectrum, the micro units have been hit the hardest uh, compared to any other type of unit. So the reason there is not a lot of transactions in this area, in my frank opinion, having just looked at these numbers, would have to do with the nature of the units available in the Young and Eglinton area. And a lot of those units, more so than the annex and other areas we'll discuss today or other areas I've discussed in the downtown video, are quite a bit smaller. Next up, Castle Loma. Here we have an average asking price of $825,000 and we had an average selling price of 817. So here we see this small gap. What does this tell us? Well, this tells us the opposite, that sellers are well adjusted in terms of price in this area. At least that was the case in January. Most likely if I look at the December numbers and November numbers, that wouldn't really pan out because no sellers in any area were well adjusted in terms of their expectations uh, when the condom market was very bad. Of course, one attribute of Castle Loma is its luxurious nature. Some people find the annex very luxurious as well, and it is, fair enough, but when we look at the numbers and the type of units that are selling in Castle Loma, their price points are much higher. And this is clearly reflected in both the average asking and selling price. And one actually did go close to 2 million in this area in the time span that we're working with here. Next up, we have Mount Pleasant East where the average asking price was $779,000 and the average selling price was $776,000. And although Mount Pleasant East has its condos compared to its Western counterpart, which is coming up next, doesn't have that many condos and it's not very condo rich. So let's move on to Mount Pleasant West, which easily actually posed the most number of transactions on this list. And we saw average asking price of $681,000 an average selling price of $675,000. Now, when you look at the map where the Young Eglinton, um, Mount Pleasant West lie, a lot of condominium buildings that people who are not in the industry naturally think, oh, well, that, that's a condo at Young and Eglinton. You'd be surprised. Those condos are actually, according to the districts and the boundaries, are technically in Mount Pleasant West. Talking about Roe Hampton buildings and some of those buildings. Look at the numbers, and when I looked at the numbers, you actually have the cheapest units selling here. And just to prove my point, the ones that actually did sell in this area, those micro units, sold 92% of asking price. So this gap between asking and selling is being very much so carried by the bigger units and more spacious units where they are selling closer to asking and the smaller micro units, even though the sellers think they're pricing them well, well, demand for them have especially plummeted, although demand for all the condo units have gone down and been on a steady decline, but it has been most pronounced with the smallest ones. And where we see on average overall in this area, the condo is going for 99% of asking with those smallest ones, according to the numbers, we see an average of 92% of asking. Next up, Rosedale Moore Park. In terms of the numbers here, this is the most expensive area, more so than Castle Loma and the Annex, which may surprise some people. So far into 2021, for the Midtown Toronto condo market, the average asking price here has been $1.18 million, and the average selling price has been $1.156, so a difference of $30,000, give or take. Now, when we look at the average number of days on market, uh, here we see a high average days on market. So far on the list for areas that have been faltering or not so much, holding up steady, uh, we see anywhere from 30 to 38 days. Here we see an average of 45 days on market, meaning the number of days a condominium for sale stays on the market before it's sold. Why is that the case? Well, because when you have higher priced commodities, usually, and those higher priced commodities where they're considered luxurious, usually those sit on the market for longer, even in a hot market. It is just inherent to very high priced uh, uh, commodities, especially in real estate, we're talking about houses. Four million dollar homes is not, when a four million dollar home is on market for 100 days, that is different than when, for instance, a $600,000 uh, you know, town home is on the market for 100 days. One is alarming, the other not so much. It is to be expected with the price point. The same vein, we have another expensive area, Young St. Clair, where the average asking price was $967,000 and the average sold price was actually $877,000. So we see a difference of 90K here. Obviously, Young St. Clair, in terms of condo purchase sales, is a very affluent area and you have a lot of end users, but even that by itself does not explain the massive gap between asking and selling. My theory is that the older units are really carrying down the selling price or at the average selling price 
uh, in this area, uh, but they're not carrying down the average asking price. However, I would have to dig deeper uh, to be very honest with you because when I went through the numbers, this was truly alarming to me. It's based on relative to the area. Once again, it's based on a fair number of transactions. Similarly, you have uh, 51 days average on market, which uh, once again, when I went to, through Rosedale Moore Park, I said that partially has to do with the fact that uh, high, you know, higher price commodities, luxurious uh, units and buildings uh, usually are staying on the market uh, for a longer period of time, even in hot markets. However, that is a fair conclusion with regards to Rosedale Moore Park, not here. St. Clair, historically, we've seen far less days on the market, even though, yes, some of the units here as well are quite luxurious in nature. And as you can see from the prices, still higher priced than most other areas. Anyways, if you have any further questions, please feel free to ask me in the comments. If there's an area you want me to cover, please suggest it in the comments as well. Uh, feel free to subscribe, comment, and like. I'm gonna do a video for North York, and then eventually I'll do videos for GTA. My goal is to do some for freehold properties as well. I know I speak a lot on condominiums on this channel. Funny enough, uh, half of my work is with freehold properties. Um, I just have to find a time to fit those in as well. For watching, feel free to subscribe, comment, and review if you have any further questions or need any more information on any matter related to Toronto real estate, feel free to get in touch. And yeah, have a safe day. Thank you very much for watching.